Here's Mike Winters. And good morning. It is 20 minutes after 8 o'clock. And joining us in studio this morning, Superintendent for the Roswell Independent School District, Brian Luck, back with us. Morning, sir. Good morning. How are you doing today? You know, pretty good. Kind of a cloudy day, but, but we're doing pretty good. Yeah, it. it I'm not going to lie. This was, this was like, I mean, yeah, it's been cooler and things, but today felt like the first full-on fall morning to me. It did. Yeah. It, it, trees it are turning. Still. Yeah. Trees are turning. You got leaves everywhere. It's, it, it looks. It's it, Roswell. Such a pretty place. Yeah. And and to boot, because uh, I come in still dark. Uh, they've put up some of the Christmas lights mm-hmm. downtown. So it, it, so a lot of the trunk portions of the yes. trees have lights on them. So it's kind of like a little adds a little uh, magical it's feel pretty. to it a bit. Yeah. Heaven, it heaven forbid you feel good about coming into work. Yeah, that's a weird thing. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, I, I'm guessing schedules got pushed around a little bit here, so the, the school board met on on a night that's not normally their their, their monthly meeting night here. Hence, why we're talking to Brian a week yes, early sir. this week here. So, but uh, the the school board did meet last night for for November. Yes, sir. And so, uh, so if you're hoping to go next week, well, now you got next Wednesday off. <laughs> Just listen to us and then go back and watch it on. Uh, on the RSD's website. Yes, sir. Find it yes, there. sir. Uh, well, election coming up next Tuesday night. That's right. It is a like that. So, so we, that makes it a little hard for you to do. I didn't think about that. Totally. Well, yeah. and our thought I start there was, you know, let's let let people deal with what they need to deal with. If they sure. want to make sure, you know, if they're late from, from work, heading to vote, we've got parents that come in for, you know, the pledge or different people doing presentations. Sure. And it, we just felt like it would probably be easier for everybody if we moved it. So let's simplify that day just a little bit for everybody. And well, let it, let it be for the for the purpose that it's sure. there for. Well, it is an important day. And, Very much uh, so. So, so uh, if you have not early voted, please make sure you do vote on Tuesday here. Or, or you got the rest of this week to early vote. But if you do not, please go out and vote here uh, on Tuesday. Yes, sir. Good deal. So um, last night, was it a pretty full agenda, pretty quiet, kind of somewhere in the middle? I, the agenda itself was, was fairly regular length. Uh, yeah. We have, you know, just some regular business kind of items. We had... A couple really neat presentations at the start of the meeting that set a really nice tone uh, for the meeting. So we had a 90-day plan uh, from Pecos Elementary School. We've we've been doing that at our board meetings with uh, schools coming in and presenting. Uh, just you know, what are they going to do? Sure. Uh, in our in our business, they're called 90-day plans. Everybody, you know, uh, improvement plans or goals or whatever. And last night's was Pecos's turn, okay. and they went a little different route with it. The principal was there, and she led the discussion, and she had two phenomenal students that got up and presented with her. Nice. So as they were going through things, uh, talking about the different data points and the different strategies that they were going to use and, and try to acquire, the kids were the ones that were leading the discussion. How cool and is that? So it, it was a neat They – it wasn't just that they knew the verb or the lingo. They actually could tell you what – that meant, gotcha. and, and it, it really did. It wasn't time. a re- recitation. No, it no, was and it, people that understood what they're doing presenting it. It, it was it was the the part for me that I really liked was it tied a lot of things together. Yeah, and it was the one of the big questions that we've been trying to answer for you know last year and a half is is this getting through? You know, what is the impact that we're making? Because we can spend a lot of money and we can do a lot of trainings and we can you know jump in front of a microphone and and pontificate about all of the great things that are coming but mm-hmm. it really did feel nice to see some of it starting to play out literally right in front of you and um finish up their 90-day presentation had a couple questions at the end and then moved right into a kindergarten presentation from Pecos as well nice and had two phenomenal ladies that were there Let me make sure i get the the names right here uh they came in and, and did their presentation i'm sorry i don't have Names with me right now, That's but right. Uh, I want to say uh, one was Miss Archibek and uh, Veronica, and I'm going to script the last name, so I'm not <laughs> going to try. Uh, but they came in with some kids, and they did a demo. They had their curriculum in front of us and talked to the board a little bit about it and then showed how the actual use of that inside the classroom. And the kids were there, and they were jumping around, and um, they had some uh, focus activities that they were working on and it was funny because the mr french and i were sitting there at the board and we both were trying to do the focus <laughs> the focus activities and, and, and i was like i can't do that Can you? And he, goes, he goes he goes no i guess I, was, I guess we're not focusing well enough but um 
they uh, they really just said a it was a nice tone, mm-hmm. and then we can you know we conducted business after that. But it, it it was a good a good vibe and a good feeling, and and you know always hats off to all of our schools, but sure, but especially to Pecos because they came in last night and just really shined. Well, and part of what I think is cool about this, and and obviously teachers, and you know they they kind of see the fruits of their labor every day. They, you know they're working with the kids and they're seeing that progress on a mm-hmm. daily basis, and. And let's face it, school board members aren't in classrooms day in and day out like teachers are, so they don't necessarily see the fruits of the decisions that they're making and, and the right. and the things they're doing. So you know, like you said, you're you know, when we talk about and we infl- you know, and, and you wonder, it's like, is it is the message ringing through? Is it is it? And so so to start the meeting. You know, they get actual proof, and they're seeing the kids. And, and I would imagine, like you said, setting the tone. You know, after that, each of those board members are probably like, okay, hey, what we're doing is, is getting through here. And I imagine it probably adds a log to that fire in their heart to want to keep doing this. It felt you know? good. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, it, and, and, again, you know, we're talking probably 14, 15 board meetings for me as superintendent. That one – uh, that one was probably the the best feeling after uh, one of those presentations that I had. I mean, I I commend every teacher, student, parent, you know, support service staff here in our district for the work that they do. But and even getting out into the buildings like I do. I mean, I don't, I just don't get that full sense until you see something like that. Right. And that's not saying that it's not going on. But like you said, I mean, when th- there's such a special bond between a teacher and a student. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think a lot of our parents picked up on that last year or, or two years ago, whenever they were at home, as far as realizing just how much time it takes to, to get things into their kids and to educate them. And, and it is, it's a labor of love and you're pouring not only your time and energy, but you're pouring yourself into the kids sure. and, and to see that really start to turn that corner. It, it, like I said, it does feel good. Sure. So, absolutely. Well, I'm, I'm glad, uh, the board got to, uh, do that and, and obviously a great job by the staff and the students to for that presentation and hey for all the schools that have to do it that haven't done it yet oh yeah maybe that, take notes and uh, <laughs> take some notes and uh you might wow some people with this that, one, so. <laughs> that bar was set pretty high last night I, I, the irony is is we had planned and in, in surprise high school principals uh our next sets of 90-day plans are going to come from some secondary people so we're going to give our our elementary group a, a little bit of time to kind of prep for that one so that they don't <laughs> group and yeah i don't want them i don't want them walking in back to that but, and, but the bar has been set just say it <laughs> yes yes it has and it it, it was very interesting because we went then into a, a presentation uh on the services that are available uh via for homeless in, in for homeless students in the Roswell independent school district okay and uh, veronica barrazas came in and just really did a phenomenal job ex- which i i'm I don't know numbers, but I'm willing to bet there's a bigger number than people realize in this district that that are quote unquote homeless uh, children. And it's and, high. Yeah. And and the interesting thing with that is when when I say a homeless student, uh, most people would equate that with okay, I I don't know that I've seen small children sitting next to their parents on the side of the street. Right. And according to the to the ped, it, that doesn't it doesn't necessarily have to be just that if you get people that might be living with a, a relative or something sure. like that, they still fall into that category. Sure. People staying in a relative's couch, basically. Right. Kind of right. Thing. Yeah. And we've got a lot of that. I mean, yeah. our, our town is, it's interesting. Roswell such a unique place. It, it's a, it's a small town that wants to be big mm-hmm. in some ways. And it's a big town that still tries to be small in other ways. Yeah. But we, we still have a lot of families here in our, in our community that, um, that struggle to make ends meet mm-hmm. and, or, maybe not struggle to make ends meet, but have to do different things uh, in order to continue to do. Yeah. They live. The Sacrifices they are made in one area to, to, to meet ends at the other. And, you know, that's kind of what a lot, well, and that's every family deals with that at some point right. or another, but some, that's a way of life. <laughs> and, and, Our, and that's the problem. I, I was at an elementary school the other day, visiting with a principal. And, and one of the conversations we were, we dove into was about a student that, that, was living with multiple sets of family members and that one of her struggles was she never knew every night where the kiddo was going to be and that the student would literally walk outside and knew the family members that he had but did not know who was coming to pick him up and that hurt you know i was like gosh that's such a different way than i grew up and 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 to be honest you know 
I would say probably 70% of our town did not grow up in that fashion, mm -hmm. but it, it is, and it makes it tough. You know, I mean, when, when you don't know where you're going to be the night, uh, you can't leave something there from the night before so that you can pick it up and do sure. what you need to do. Uh, and it's, and, and then say, Hey, okay, the next morning I want you to walk into school and pretend like everything's okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, it does make it tough. And, and we've got some really good people that, that monitor that for us. They help follow uh, the kiddos, uh, if they were to move and leave town, they try to follow where they're at because it's our responsibility. Uh, if they'll notify us where they're going, you know, I'm sure. going to move to San Antonio, fair enough. And then we contact the, sure the that kids education the, the group there in San Antonio yeah. just to try to make sure that we're doing everything that we can mm -hmm. to ensure that they get what they need, regardless where that is. Yeah. Um, because that's, you know, that, that's a tough one, you know. Yeah. And again, like I said, that was a that I left that day not having a real good feeling in the pit of my stomach because it just you know, it hits home. Sure. And and it's it's hard and and it to say that it does not happen in our town is it's not accurate. Yeah, yeah, and that and that's why I mentioned that. I was like, yeah. I think there's it's a bigger there's a bigger population of kids that deal with these issues, and I think mm -hmm. many in our community realize we do. And and then right after that, the the November is National Homeless uh, Awareness. Uh, month and so they actually picked up a, a resolution that said you know that in support of making sure that that our district supports uh, actions that we are going to follow all policies we're going to you know a, a be straight down the arrow with what we need to do to help kids and just an open commitment from the school board itself mm -hmm. and so we tied that right into that right after it and and then they also got an opportunity to hear from Ms. Barrazas the different supports that we have, uh, whether that be coats or shoes or, uh, you know, helping uh, with find resources mm -hmm. in the community. That's another thing with Roswell is I, I constantly have people reach out and say, hey, you know, might not be able to do this for a lot, but if you ever run into the, something like this, mm -hmm. don't hesitate. I don't want my name mentioned, but don't hesitate to reach out to me. So, yeah. Hats off to our community as well. Absolutely. And I, I'll just, again, my wife's a teacher. I, I see a lot of stories and things. And, and just over the years, I've seen lots where, where teachers, yes. you know, not just my wife, but many, many teachers in our district, you know, they see a kid with shoes that, that you know, they, they're wearing these, the, you know, uh, you know, my wife, matter of fact, my wife had did it and bought them over the years. And then there's been times where, Someone else heard she bought shoes and got shoes donated and yeah. things like that. So it, it, it's um, there's a lot of uh, heroes that are under the radar that just take care of these needs without, you know, and, and that's what, I mean, we see numbers at your level, but how many of those other people, they just get taken care of because right. someone says, oh, they, that poor child needs this, I got this and I got this. I don't have time to wait on Brian. Yeah. So I'm going to go get this. I'm going to go <laughs> get this done. So it's, so we got to salute all those people, but and thank you, but uh, we'd like to get to a point where you know sure. where, where, where there's more resources for this and everything else, and so because it is it is something that you know our teachers look at, and it's just one of those things, you know, when we talk about teachers. And I know I'm my wife's a teacher, I'm biased, but that they they do so many things that go under the radar that people don't realize, right. and and so all you got to do is you work you know seven months a year or whatever, ten months a year, whatever the number <laughs> is, and you're just like okay, uh, whatever, bud. <laughs> Yeah. Well, and Ms. Barrazas and I were talking the other day, and, and I'd made the comment, you know, I said, it's it's about time for a coat drive. And, uh, you know, as if you were to run into, you know, a closet or if you've got people out there that have had, you know, their kids are grown and, and probably still haven't had mm -hmm. a chance to clean out a closet or maybe a bedroom and you run across something like that, man, don't get, don't throw it away. Uh, you know, if you, if you don't donate it to a a shelter or something like that, especially if it's a little kid size, we would be more than happy to take it. And that's a and, great idea. And if yeah. you, I mean, I'll help you out with that. If, if, if you can't think of anywhere to take it, you're free to bring it by central office or just take okay. it to any of the schools here in town and, and we'll get it and we'll get it back where it needs to go, get it good and cleaned good up deal. and, and get it out. They actually have a, a little, a little storeroom, a little warehouse. Okay, with like a, different, a pantry almost. Or yes, a sir. With clothing diff closet. Diff different sizes, and and I've already reached out to some of the schools to just to make sure where we're at. So we haven't really put the full court press on as far as getting that out yet. But you know, if you run into that, or we've got listeners that have, sure, you know, it's time to time to clean out a closet or something like that. Boy, don't absolutely you know, don't hesitate, or if if not, shoot, just reach out to me and I'll come get them. I mean, yeah. that's. 
That's we'll not make, a big deal. Call the radio station and yeah. tell us. We'll drop them off here. We'll make sure it gets Absolutely. in the right hands. Absolutely. Because I think you, I think you're spot on. I mean, I'm I'm the son of a teacher, and I can tell you multiple times that you know things would go to school and they wouldn't come back, and I'd I'd ask my mom, you know, what happened to that? And she said, don't worry about it. Yeah. You know, and I hey, that's good, or or a sack full of you know Cheez Its and. Yeah. and Things like that would would go, and I was like, "Where's that?" Oh, I left it at school. Darn it! You For know. many years, my wife used to have this big bag of Christmas presents sitting in our closet, and I'm mm-hmm. like, "What's who's present?" He goes, "There, just in case kids forget, I bring presents and have you know, yeah. you know, just little things like that. it's just stuff that." And for years, it'd be sitting up there, and like, "Oh, in case people forget presents." Right. <laughs> That's just kind of stuff they do. Well, they they assume such a special place in the kids' lives. Yeah, and you take that away for a year or two. And it's a tough, it's a tough turn back on, and it really does show people what, what they missed. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and again, you can't write that down. You can't put a number to that. Yep. It's just that gum special. Yep, absolutely. So please, uh, thank to, thank you to every absolutely. single person that does that. And 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 you know what? Let's uh, uh, you know, participate. Work with the schools on you know for folks that are wanting to do more here. You know, sure. talk to the office here and say, hey, how can we get involved? How can we help? And Let's uh let's let's see if we can blow this up into something pretty big, uh, a big, well run, well organized side of the RSD that that that's out there. So, what a novel approach! Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I know we got a little uh, off that's off topic okay. there that's with okay. uh, with our meeting, but we'll bring it back in here. Now, the, then, the uh, Mr. Buley came in with some assessment updates. I think one of the biggest one is the uh, Nation's Report card that came out a couple of weeks ago and. And where New Mexico ranks, and it is it's dead last. And we we were answering fielding questions from the board. We don't have a Roswell report. Uh, if if that's available, we don't have it. Right. I understand how it is with radio. You know, they talk about ratings and your mm-hmm. Armatron ratings and all. Well, they only do that in the major twenty five markets. You know, larger like Albuquerque is a rated market. Mm-hmm. You get down here, and and if we show up in numbers, it's because accident because. We're in an out. We're not in the Albuquerque market, but sometimes we show up in that on the. So ratings don't really aren't relevant here, and despite what radio salespeople tell you when they visit your businesses, it's not that relevant around here. But <laughs> anyway, because <laughs> they're trying to sell you something anyway. But but I so I imagine it's similar in in that vein where yeah they're, they're looking at Dallas, they're not looking at Roswell, New Mexico. Well, and and ironically that you bring that up, the the one town that was mentioned on there was Albuquerque, mm. and so there was a slide there that did talk about Albuquerque and changes and no changes and. And I think the biggest thing for me that I would like to get out to the public or make sure that everybody understands is we know where we're at. Mm-hmm. You know, we're not running from it. We're not hiding from it. Uh, and we have work to do. Uh, we've put a lot of time. I've got a phenomenal, I guess got a great group, but I want to, I want to brag real quick on my curriculum and instruction office for just a second. They've put together a plan to try to regroup and, and then not only regroup, but then push Gotcha. And I really think that we're going to get there. We've got our middle of the year, our MOI test that are going to be coming up here, December, January type. And we're really excited about the data. Some of the preliminary work, uh, and it, it's interesting, to, you know, I have people say, well, we're always given a test. And I'm like, I know that. But part of the other side of that is we have to be able to um, – measure well we got a plan yeah you know i mean if 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 this is my widget factory and Mm -hmm. people hate it when i do the widget (laughs) thing but if this is my widget factory and i'm doing i'm midway through my production season and i'm producing more better faster stronger uh that's what i'm looking for sure you know we have to have some type of a data point Mm -hmm. to go from for that so uh again uh and, and our board is extremely committed i cannot emphasize that enough sure as far as we will do better we are going to do better well, and, and, you know, kind of keeping with the widget, you know, ideology, it's it, 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 if, you know, obviously the, it, this is the, 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 the balls they juggle here that, that yes, every child's unique individual, we want to give every child the attention that they deserve, but we want to, we, we've got a lot of them. We've got thousands of them. Right. And we've got to get all thousands of them through this. How do we do that? efficiently efficiently with the resources and materials we have and so mm-hmm. that's that's really at the end of the day the balance that you guys have to deal is all right we we want to make this crank out those widgets as fast and great as possible without sacrificing the personal touch right 
And that's that's a it, when 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 the world figures it out, you're going to be a billionaire because that that's kind of the key to the, you know how to how do you juggle this? Well, if if you have that key to success, you can stop doing what you're doing here. <laughs> um, and and that's not the interesting part about it is I think it's the same set of problems that every superintendent, every board, every person that's ever walked into a classroom mm-hmm. has faced. Whether even if you go back 40, 50 years, granite times were different and things were different. But they still had their it set of problems, Mm -hmm. and those were their key things that they were after. And right now, our it set of problems will look a little different Mm -hmm. than they have in the past, and and they'll need a little different solution. So super excited about finding out and and seeing if our prep work has got us in the right place. I think, like I said, our preliminary data is showing that we're in a good spot. So Good. um, Some action items real quick. We've approved some trips out of town. Uh, for our kids, anytime a that's student, nice. Well, anytime a student leaves New Mexico, uh-huh. we have to go take that before the board. Yeah. So the irony is, is we can travel all the way to Farmington or Florida, a- Aztec. Well, <laughs> if if I stay in the state of New Mexico, I can get on a bus for eight hours and go to Shiprock, and you're good. And to I go. and I do not need board approval. But you go to Lubbock. But if I go to uh, Denver City, Texas, or Plains, uh, Texas, right across the straight line, I've got to get board approval. Yeah. And that's okay. Those state uh, lines. Well, it, and it they like to know, and I don't blame them because sure. because when you're you generally when you talk out of state, you're talking, you know, ten fifteen hours give or take uh, mm-hmm. a Florida trip, sure. Los Angeles, a, yeah, a, uh, summer multiple days, uh, uh, Indianapolis for you know our FFA guys yeah. and gals. But these were uh, uh, Roswell High close up trip to Washington D.C., and then Goddard and, and Roswell High School are taking and they're taking like two hundred and thirty kids. Uh, over to Texas Tech to tour the campus. So oh, we have cool. a, a program it's called... It's going to be a quiet day at the in the, college, the high schools there. It's going to be a little, little less peep traffic at the high schools that day. A little bit. <laughs> it, the, we've got a program called AVID. And at some point in time, I really would like to have Ms. Cole and a couple of the principals come in and, and really you know talk about AVID as a whole. But it's something that we've brought in. Uh, it makes sense. Uh, it is, it's, takes you back to a little bit of old-fashioned teaching um, some citizenship. Uh, it's it's just a very good program. So that particular group of kiddos, and it's ninth, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth graders. So it's it's across the parameter there of the kids. Okay. They are headed to Lubbock to go tour tech. The thought there, why wait until they're juniors or seniors to go get them excited about going to college? Sure. Let's let's take a student that, um, and these don't necessarily have to be. Uh, you know, in honor society kind of kids. This, these are just some general average run-of-the-mill kids that may or may not go to college. Sure. Uh, and but they may express or, an interest. And may or may not go to Texas Tech. But you get them to one of those schools, you show them the opportunities that are outside. Here's what of, awaits you uh, after yeah. high school. Yeah. And and it, it's, it really does spark a fire with a lot of them. And it is just a great opportunity. We're excited about that. Um, we had... We had some policies that were on the books last night for a second reading. One of them is our medical cannabis, and there were three policies associated with that. Uh, just real quick, we are not, <laughs> and I had some people catch me in the grocery store. When we look at medical cannabis, what we wanted to do was make sure, because that policy is not currently in existence anywhere. And uh, state law says that if a doctor prescribes it, we have to let it happen. Sure. So we wanted to get in front of that policy. I had somebody say, "Well, are they gonna, they gonna be able to smoke?" No, it's it's a, it, it's not that. It's a. It's well, a, and and let's face it, and I'm not an expert, but if it's medical for children, it's probably in a pill form of some kind. So it not has. A, so our policy, that our our potential policy, will state that it has to be. But then it has to be regulated, just yeah. like any other medication given at the school level. Yeah, it has to be accompanied by a doctor. Sure, uh, it, you have to bring it in. You have to take it at particular times. It'd be just like if a child got prescribed pain meds for a root canal or something, and yes, they got to take their their Percocet yes. at noon or something. That it would it go to the nurse. The nurse would administer it, and that so it, it's treated exactly the same way. And I I said the word I, and I was not trying to offend people and I don't think I will, but I yeah. said if you substitute the word Ritlin for cannabis, it everything flows. It's it's not anything that we're attacking one over another. Sure. It's a it's a nameless, faceless policy that's in good practice. Sure. So uh we did have that we thought ready and we ran it by legal 
uh, <laughs> and then it wasn't so ready. <laughs> well, and ironically, yes, there were just a few minor changes that they wanted to make before we, we went ahead and put it through. Mm. We weren't in a rush for it. So we went ahead and tabled that one for last night. We pulled it off the agenda. It's better to get it right than fast. That's exactly right. Yep. Now, the we did have a policy about uh, using Narcan and having Narcan on campus and then a, a, a Narcan checklist for staff, training buildings, et cetera, and then an opioid overdose policy. Does that get to a situation where at some point all staff will have to be knowledgeable on how to use it, or is it? Well, it's voluntary with that. I okay. mean, they don't, they don't have to come Because didn't they do the say, same thing with the defibrillator deals that, that, that are in no. kind of some places? No, so those are posted in the buildings, and okay. usually the nurse has those at the smaller schools. But we've got those in the high schools at a couple of different common places. Okay. Uh, but more like your EpiPen would be, okay. would be what that is. So and if, if somebody's not comfortable with it, I'm not going to ask them to be certified in sure. that situation, but sure. but we do and have had situations. Fortunately, they were they were false, uh, but we've had a couple where, like our security guards, we felt like our security guards might have come into contact with fentanyl. Yeah, that's the thing. As scary as anybody, if you accidentally touch yes. this fentanyl, you're going to need the Narcan. It's it, so it's not just you know because you're thinking, well, how much drugs are coming into schools and things, and and it's not often, but it, with this fentanyl. It can impact a lot of people with not even, you know, intending to. Well, and we had, that's, that's we had a the fight. problem. We had a fight one time at, at the high school, and after it's all said and done, we had, you know, EMS come in because there was a, a potential medical incident that happened afterwards, and they're gloving up and masking up, and, and this is before COVID ever was even a thought, and we're mm. like, that seems a bit you know, overkill. We're, we're, we're sitting there, and, <laughs> and you, you just got this crazy look in your eye because you've just had to deal with that, and, and they're like, well, we're, we're precautionary over this. And we all looked at each other like, you got any more of those gloves? <laughs> oh, you know, um, we were too. You just, yeah. you just you just didn't see that right now. But yeah. um, no, we're we're making sure that we're we're being proactive with that. Sure. Um, some some big ones coming up. I don't know how much time we have left. We have a few more minutes. Okay, so uh, strategic plan update. Uh, we have worked really hard to get on paper our goals as a district for the next year year and a half. We will have some community input, well, a community input session that will take place November the 16th, Okay, which is a couple Wednesdays from now. Yep. And I'm going to have staff, I'll have principals, I'll have staff on that day. And then at the end of it, from 530 to 7, I will have, it is a, it's a community forum. So anybody that wants to come in and listen to our projections and what we're thinking. Okay. And it's a, it's a feedback session. Uh, we'll stick to the strategic plan. I mean, if they want to chew on me for something else, we'll probably make an appointment. Uh, but uh, I would like the feedback. You know, this gotcha. is this is our school district, uh, and if we're off base on what we're looking at, I would, you know, not that would be the time to to, to well, speak up. And that, and that's what you know, it, you know, obviously school board meetings when the board meets and things, and a lot of times when certain topics they that that are up for discussion are are getting uh, get a little more attendance and audience than others. But 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 this is that forum for. You know, obviously, you know, we want to stick relatively close to the topics at hand here. But but um, this is that chance for the public to say, you know, if, so if you're on Facebook, it says everyone loves to grumble about things on social media. And I'm like, oh, well, you want to do something about it? Well, this meeting is one of those types of events. This is you rolling up your sleeves and, and being part of the part of the, 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 the cure, not the not the cause. And what we'll do is we'll post that online. For, for people so that they're not walking in and, and it's it's a substantial document it's got six primary bullets and each of those bullets probably have you know eight seven eight things underneath them so it's not something that, that I mean if you needed to and you walked in and you just started reading it I guess you could be okay but for those that really want to have an opportunity to look into it we'll have that posted online and I'll get the yeah. the location we've had some confusion as to actually where the location I'm gonna do this is gotcha trying to try to get a big enough space Sure. Just in case I have a decent sized crowd. Sure. Um, well, you could always put them at the uh, at the uh, auditorium right. there. At the well, in the room yeah. that we the room that I'm planning to use is actually right next to the auditorium. So okay. if I do get a larger crowd, then we can always walk can in there. Walk over next door. You bet. Um, that's coming up. Two other big things. One with our football teams making the playoffs. Uh, and congratulations, congratulations. to uh, Coach Lynn, Coach White, the the assistant coaches. The assistant coaches' wives, the coaches' wives. I mean, it is – you talk about labor of love. It's an army of people that support Gosh, the, yeah. the band, the band parents. It's, it is just 
it is so nice to go back out to these games and see that happening again. Yeah. It, it's just normal. Well, we got a weekend off. Yes, football, and so. and uh, your crew was was very excited about that. So, um, <laughs> I, and I wish, I, and I want to say, well, thank they're you not really too. off because now we got like soccer and other and volleyball right. and other well, things going on. So. They can think they're off. So. <laughs> and MMI is still around doing stuff. So, yeah. but the one thing that we would like to remind everybody, our our teachers, and then our our people in the community, once we hit playoffs, our our passes. Uh, don't work. So your activity passes don't work. And then our teacher badges don't work as well. Yeah. But um, the other big one is that we are going, when this happens, we go back to an MAA setup, which is online. So our tickets will be all online. And okay. Mr. Cooper in the athletic office is going to get out all the information on that okay. as soon as we set the dates and times of the games. I remember like last year, it was a lot of them you had on your phone. And yes. You could kind of do, do, scan and it in when you come into the gate there. We chose as a district not to go that route this year. We okay. felt like we felt like it was just maybe a little more hassle okay. for our community than it than it was worth for Britt. Okay. <laughs> I'll be honest. <laughs> okay. Um, but we don't have a choice on this one. So okay. uh, we, we'd be more than happy to help people. Sure. Uh, if they need help getting them, um, the the funny one is I I saw generations coming together in line with people that weren't real familiar with how to use their phones to get to the deal, and you yeah. know the high school kids are standing there going, "Here, just give me your phone," or "Hand me your cash, and I'll buy your ticket." And right. So there's like I said, we're we just wanted to make sure everybody was aware of that. Sure. And by the way, um, just for for video, and we'll obviously carry all of their playoff games on the radio. Um, this first round, for them first round, it's not the first round, but for our team's first round, um, we'll we'll be able to video those. At the um, home sites, usually. Yeah. yeah. Um, past that, I, I don't think we will because, again, just like NMMA takes over, different people have the video rights to, uh, even if they're in our home stadiums right. here. They So I, I can tell you right now, we will not be able to video a championship Correct. game. Odds are pretty good. We're going to have at least one, probably two teams uh, from our district that will be making an appearance in that. Um, which which two? Uh, we got to play the games first. But. Well, and if that if when that happens, I would advise that you buy a ticket. They're not heavy. Yeah. And you can carry one on into exactly. the game and, and come and cheer. And really, high school football in New Mexico, I mean, everybody yeah. always talks about Texas. There is a special – it's a special feel on a Saturday afternoon yep. for a championship game. Yep. And real, real quick, yeah. last thing for me, our Thanksgiving dinners, we're back. Oh, uh, we've got our we've got our parents coming back in. That will be November the 9th for elementary. All That's right. kind of the big one. The okay. Mid school and high school is on the 11th, but the Yeah, the, the high 9th, school parents uh, don't seem to yeah, you they know, don't. or the kids I would say are probably not uh, so thrilled about their parents coming as best Thanksgiving. <laughs> November 9th, the cost of that is $5. Okay. If you need more information, contact your child's school. Very good. So come and have lunch with your Absolutely. Thanksgiving lunch with the uh, and uh, I've always loved the Thanksgiving school lunches. Even as a kid, I loved I loved that turkey. I loved the dressing. I love uh, uh, to me it's, pumpkin square. Yeah, I love that was one of my favorites. <laughs> it, uh, close second to the pizza. Yeah. yeah well, but, yeah. I uh, I didn't plan last year. I I was late to the date, and I am solid white shirt and roll into Washington Avenue. And I was cranberry guy, and I I don't know how we did it, but I I managed to pull it off. But the white shirt didn't make it. White shirt was fine. Okay, um, but it it is it's just a neat thing, it is. and like I said, that turns back on so many things, and and it is it's such a good deal to get well, the parents. Well, your, your whole meeting last night is just you know because we we're talking improving trips. You know, you guys weren't doing that for a couple of years. No, we uh, you know we're talking about. Parents coming in and enjoying a meal with their children in a school again. I mean, this is nice. So it's it's nice to see. Dare I say regular. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe we'll be back to doing I know like a lot of schools like to bring in community leaders to have lunch with some of the kids sure. and do maybe all that stuff will start coming back. I the, see that starting back up. And yeah. then and then too with the other parts of that is our veterans assemblies that are yeah. coming up. They're gonna be in person. Yes, sir. Uh, at the high schools. We'll 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 work hard and heavy to to give you all the information and bring some of that, but I know uh, Goddard, Roswell, uh, many of our middle and elementary schools have uh, different ceremonies planned and things. And, uh, of course, we'll have the citywide that, that Saturday after Veterans Day. So. Well, and I, and I will say this. If, if you're a veteran and maybe you don't have a school-age kid or, or your school kids are long gone and, and moved away and you'd like to be a part of something, you just don't know where, don't hesitate to reach out to yes. central office, please. 
I, if you're, I'm not trying to play favorites here, but if you're a rookie and never been to a veterans assembly, go visit the Goddard one. They they all do an amazing <laughs> job. They all are great. I'm not trying to, but they they it's it's like you're going to a rock concert with uh with the veterans that come in there. They just you walk in the building and there's like about 400 people cheering you on. You know, mm-hmm. it's just amazing. So it's just it's a it's a but and and I love this part because. And I say this to all veterans, you know, I know a lot of veterans don't want recognition. Right. They just kind of did my job and go home. But it is also your duty as a veteran, in my opinion, to um, ensure that we have another generation of veterans like you. Yep. And so we need to put you on the pedestal a little bit to show the next generation why you're important. And that's what this day is all about to me. It's interesting from from being a part of that assembly for so many years. Mm-hmm. It it is an opportunity to honor the individuals, but it's also as equal, if maybe not even greater, equal of an opportunity to educate the kids mm-hmm. about what has gone before them to get them there. Absolutely, and you cannot put a price tag on that. Yep, and uh, and it's just it's just it's kind of you know they all do great, but the Goddard one just seems to have like this. It's like a rock concert. It's you know, you're used to, and, and the kids are celebrating and cheering, and it's not like gratuitous. It's because they really appreciate right. what these people are doing, and it's we, it's neat. I can't think of a year that we didn't have a veteran come up to to either myself or Mister Hill and say, "For years, I walked around with with bad, and you gave me the opportunity today to get rid of it." Yep. So that's true. I never I never thought from that angle. You know, folks dealing with. Some issues and things. I'm lucky. I, I didn't have to do, but I know I'm, I'm. A lot of people weren't lucky like me. So, well, Brian, we get it all. I got it all. Awesome. <laughs> As always, appreciate the visit here. And uh, and anytime we need to before next month, we need to see you. Don't hesitate to reach out. You bet. I look awesome. forward to it. Happy Veterans Day to you, especially. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you next time. All right. Yes, sir. Thank you. It is uh, eight fifty-seven. Quick break before news. Don't go away.